Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic to version 12.3. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Adobe Lightroom Classic. And in my opinion, there is something new and exciting in this, the latest version of Lightroom Classic. They've added AI powered noise reduction. Now we're going to go over that in this video. There are some limitations. I'll be talking about that as well. And we're going to talk about a couple other new things that have been added to this version of Lightroom. First of all, a cosmetic change. You can see I'm in the develop module. And if you look over on the right hand side at the different tabs, you notice on the left, there are these little eyeball icons. In the past, there was an on off switch. So you could turn one of the tabs off. Like if you didn't want to look at tone curve, you could turn the switch off or you didn't want to see the adjustments you did for the tone curve, you could turn the switch off. Now we have these eyeballs. And if you have a dimmed or diminished eyeball, that means no adjustments were done in those tabs. So I did, haven't done any HSL color adjustments, no color grading, no transform and so on. The eyeballs that are brighter means adjustments have been done under that tab or in that tab for this image. And you could temporarily turn off those adjustments by just clicking with the left mouse button and holding the eyeball. So if I click here, see there's before and there's after. So you have to hold in the left mouse button. There's before, that's the basic panel, and there's after. So that's a cosmetic change. Now let's talk about this new AI powered noise reduction. It's found in the detail tab where the previous noise uh, reduction was still has sharpening up here. You can see the same sliders as always. And right here we have noise reduction, denoise, they're calling it. Reduce noise with AI. The result will be saved as a new DNG file. So it's non-destructive. It's going to create a new file and that new file will have the noise reduced. Now, if you don't want to use the AI powered denoise, you can use the previous noise reduction. Just open up this uh, triangle right here and you can see the sliders that you're used to are here. So you could use that if you want to. But let's try out the denoise. Now you can see this image here, I'll zoom in, a considerable amount of noise. And I've used this same image on different applications where I was demonstrating the noise reduction capabilities of those applications. So to use it, all you need to do is go to the detail tab, click on this denoise button and you'll come up with this enhanced preview dialog box. This is the same dialog box where we did super resolution and enhanced, um, you know, sharpness and things. It's the same thing. They added to noise to it and it's right here. And you can see that it automatically will give you a preview in this preview window. And if you want to see a before after, just click with the left mouse button and hold there's before and there's after. Now we're really not looking at a critical part of the image here. So if you want to see a different part of the image, you can just drag it around. Another way to do it is just click on this little minus magnifier, which is in the lower right hand corner. You'll see the entire image and you'll get a little crosshair or plus sign as a cursor. Then just click somewhere on the image that you want it to zoom into. Let's say on the bird's eye and there it is. So there's before and there's after. Now there's only one slider. It's just an amount slider. By default, it'll be at 100. If you think it's softening your image too much, just back it off. But in this case, I'm going to leave it at 100 and I'll click Enhance. You'll see in the top left hand corner, there is a progress bar and that was now it's removing the noise and it's going to create that DNG file. And I found it to be relatively fast. It works very quickly. And you'll notice then once it's done down here in the film strip, it has that second file and it will be on that file. So this is the noise reduced image. Here is the image, the original raw file that has the noise. And let me zoom in so you can see the noise. We'll go to the other image. There's the noise reduced image. So there's before, there's after. There's before and there's after. Now you can see it does a great job. Now let's do another one and they do have some limitations. So I'm going to talk about the limitations as well. Let's go to this image. This is another one shot at relatively high ISO. I've used this image also in numerous other demonstrations of noise reduction in various applications. So let's do this one. We're going to click on denoise. Again, we'll get this box. We'll get a preview here. 
we could zoom out and zoom into a more critical area of the image. See the noise reduced, just click enhance. And while it's creating this DNG file, let's talk about some of the limitations. First of all, it only works on raw files and it only works on specific raw files. Raw files that were created with cameras that have a Bayer or X-Trans sensor. So it'll work with Fuji raw files and it'll work with any camera, other camera manufacturer, that uses a Bayer sensor. Now these last two images that I've done have been Nikon RAW files. They use a Bayer uh, sensor. So it won't work on JPEGs, it won't work on HEIC or Pro RAW or SRAW, any of those RAW files that come from uh, mobile phones. It'll only work on Bayer and X-Trans sensor RAW files. Now they do say, Adobe that is, they say that they're going to expand this so it works on most every file type from any type of sensor. But for this version of Lightroom 12.3 right now, we're limited to just Bayer and X-Trans RAW files. All right. So let's zoom in. Here's our after. And here is our before. And here is our after. You can zoom in on this other woodpecker. So there's the after. And there's before. Let's do another one just so that you can get an idea. This is another image that I often use when I'm demonstrating noise reduction in different applications. Let's click on, now by the way, if you don't want to use or don't want to access the noise reduction here, you can do it, I believe it's from the photo um, menu at the top and you go down to enhance. When you do that, you'll see you bring up this enhance preview again and there's denoise and you could let it do its thing. So that's another way you could access it. And this one's taken a little longer. This is um, not really sure why, but there it is, the noise reduced. I'm not going to do uh, move around though. We'll just click enhance. And you do have the option to have it automatically create some keywords and enter those keywords that indicate that the image is an image that has noise done to it, noise reduction done to it already. You do have to turn that on though. It's in Lightroom Classics settings. Settings is under the Lightroom Classic menu on a Mac. It's under the edit menu on a PC. And if you go over to file handling, it's right here. Automatically add keywords to enhanced images. When you're doing the noise reduction, it will automatically add the keyword denoise. To, to that. Now, if you're doing like, um, you're adding the detail, remember that's an older thing you could do in, in, um, in Lightroom, specifically with the Fuji x -Trans sensor, it will write raw details. And if you're doing super resolution, that's another option. Uh, when you're going to make an image larger uh, using Lightroom Classic, it will put super resolution in as a keyword as well. So just have to have this checkbox checked for that to happen. So uh, let's zoom in, there's an after, and there is before. Before, after, before, after. Now, I don't wanna belabor this point too much. I do wanna do one more, something taken with a Sony camera. Uh, this is a night shot, as you can see, or a blue hour shot. You can see there's a considerable amount of noise. I just wanna show you how it works with Sony uh, you know, raw files as well. So we'll do this. I'm not going to um, try to get, look at a better point on the image. We'll just click enhance and let it do its thing. Now, I will uh, say again that Adobe has stated that they do plan on having this work with other file types. Uh, so it's just not out with this version of Lightroom yet. So depending when you're watching this video, if you're watching it a year from now or something, it may uh, may very well work with JPEGs and TIFF files and other file types. Uh, so give it a try. But uh, as of when it was initially released, it only will work with Bayer and X-Trans sensor raw files. So I'm beating this to death. So let's go here. There's really not a lot of adjustments. Like I said, there's just that amount slider. So in that case, you know, compared to, let's say, Topaz Labs to Noise AI, you have a lot more options there and you have a lot better chance of getting a better result on some raw files with it because you have a lot of options 
there uh, to reduce noise in those images. So let's go in here. This is the after, and this is before. So you can see a lot of noise up in here, and here's the after. So that's it. We're not going to talk about that denoise or the noise reduction, AI noise reduction, any longer. We're going to go on to the next new thing that is in this, the latest version of Adobe Lightroom Classic version 12.3. It has to do with masking. Let's go to masking, and it has to do specifically with the people mask. Um, you can see this is a person, so we it found the person. I'm going to click on this, and it added facial hair, so a subcategory facial hair, and it added clothes. So you now could do or add masks and do edits to a person's facial hair and or their clothing. Very nice. They also uh, changed this. It's called facial skin. I think before it was called face skin or something like that. So they just renamed it. It's the same exact thing. Uh, it just was renamed from, I believe it was face skin. Now it's facial skin. So let's just uh, pick facial hair and we'll create this mask and I'll show you something else that has been added. Uh, you'll notice that we created this mask and this may look a little different. We have tone, color, curve. We have a tone curve now for masking. Now this of course was in Adobe Camera Raw, which is of course part of Photoshop. It's been there for a few months and I've been expecting it to be added to Lightroom and they finally did. So now there is a tone curve. So you could come in and do a tone or have a tone curve for your masking. So in this case here, let's make his beard a little brighter. Let's change the color of his beard. Is that fun? That kind of looks silly. I don't know, something weird. All right. All right, we had a lot of fun. So th that's two new things. They've added the tone curve to masking, and they've added those two kind of sub-masks for clothing and for facial hair. So they've added that. And that is all I'm going to go over in this video. There's some other minor things they've done with keywords. I'll talk about that in future videos. They've added some new lens support. I'll have that listed in the description below this video. Not a lot. They haven't done a lot there. Um, they've updated their adaptive presets so that it will um, darken a beard and things like that. Let's go over to presets, see if I can find it real quick. You can see the adaptive presets. There should be one here now, darken beard, yeah, right here. So there's that preset. Um, so they've added that because they have this new functionality now. So they've added a preset for it and so on. So uh, again, uh, in the description below this video, I'll list the new lens support. I don't think there's any new camera support, but I'll double check that. If there is, I'll have that listed in the description below this video. They have, of course, fixed bugs. They do that in every release and they probably created a few more uh, <laughs> because if you're used to using Lightroom, you probably know that's true. And uh, that's it. So let me know what you think of this new AI powered noise reduction that is now found in Lightroom Classic. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.